I got a really nice view of this place. That's one of the best views in the city. Just gotta walk it for a little bit. And um, yeah, it's just uh, one of the things where you have to ask the driver to let you go. Normally you just come here and stand up here. So yeah, you can just go up here. And Yeah, I'm gonna get you another view. I'm gonna start from the beginning. There's actually a stand you can stand on there and get a view too, but I don't need to do that. I just gotta watch all these people come by. They're probably gonna see me doing whatever I'm doing. It's all good. Just gotta get the footage for you all, you know what I mean? This is one of the best spots right here. If you can get to it, it's like a crossroad between uh, these buildings here and this. This is an amazing view. Right, so I got my view. There's a first view over there too. I don't think the Ferris wheel ever works. I don't know. I mean, I, I've been there, but I don't know if it ever is active at night or not. I'd really give it a try, but uh, I, I, I will go by there uh, another time and see what happens. But this is the end of uh, the Trungsa Road. You know Trungsa, the what mornings I run? That side is the Hongsa side. And this is the Trung... I think that's the Hongsa side, but there is no Hongsa side. Hongsa side ends at that Ferris wheel. At the Ferris wheel over here, it ends there. So, um, but the Trungsa side goes all the way down to the waterfront by the golf driving range. And that's where I'm heading now. Go hit some, uh, you know, get some balls out there at the driving range, which is right here, the driving range. You know, I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of foreigners there. You know, my videos, I go all these places where there's like a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, what do you call it? A lot of uh, locals and no foreigners. And guess what? I'm this is area full of foreigners. Binten, Binten district. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Uh, yeah, so uh, I might read you all some a little bit of uh, content. Sure. side of the um, uh, of the Vin Homes because you go that way right that way you go to the park but I'm over here where all the people are fishing it's one of those uh, cool places where like, the locals hang out they're behind the they're behind the golf course I'll show you the golf course let me show you the golf course there's also a little park in here too uh, but I'll show you the golf course really quick uh, I'll show you the the golf course I think it's the, the golf course like over here somewhere. So uh, I'll walk by this show the golf course. Anyway, this area is pretty nice. Uh, and another, another nice area of uh, Saigon. I'm just gonna show you like a whole bunch of little local hot spots. Let's go here and there. I got, um, got I rented a person to take me around. You know, I mean, I, I could ride myself, but I don't wanna waste time looking at GPS and stuff and whatever. Somebody else could take me. So this is the actual golf course. So you want to go and play some balls in here, but it all depends on, on, on where, where you want to go. But um, this is the way you hit the golf golf course. And then you come from here and you open some other stuff as well. But you know, you go there and then you go along here and it's really, really like, oh, I'll take my hand off. So it's really, uh, oh, cute girl. Anyway, so, yeah, like I said, the Vietnamese women have like really nice silhouettes, you know, when, when they uh, are wearing their uh, tight clothes. 
a lot of them are like size zero size two you know but they're they're not 36 c they're like 34 a or b but which is still okay uh and here's all the plants and stuff so depending on uh, depending on and, uh they got this like this little uh monument of uh you know like some ancient ruins or something but it's not really ancient just a piece of rock in the middle of the park and so uh, yeah and i'm out here doing this thing here it's kind of walking around but give you a tour i'm under the big freeway that comes up along here goes across here yeah like i said you know vietnamese girls have a nice silhouette i think i think they probably have the nicest silhouette among asian women in uh, southeast asia you know the, I, I say the second nice silhouette is probably a thai thai girl because their body shape is very similar to uh, the vietnamese girl but uh I think the Vietnamese girls are a little bit more slender than the Thai girls but uh, you know Thai girls are a little bit more uh, how would I say uh, they're not more 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 meaty they're just, yeah, actually they're more meaty they're just more meaty but they're not more chunky uh, I think I would, I would say the biggest uh, girl the chunkiest I would say like you know I mean like chunky but like you know something who the girl's not really my type you know who's like a size 4 size 6 a little shorter those girls are more Filipino type girls and, uh, and then we get to like the Malaysian Indonesian parts of the world you can't really tell because they wear those uh, you know baggy dress and so um, yeah so that's my that's just my my take on it I mean people have everybody have their own taste you know my taste is like I, I, I like that slender tall slender look on a girl with a nice shape I mean I guess 30, 36C would be nice but you know 34 b's or a's ain't that bad it goes good padding i guess but the main important thing is the, is the, the entire you know body down there and everything because that's where all the action happens right so uh like i'm uh so small and kind of kind of tight you know what i mean yeah so uh yeah that's just my take on it but anyways uh this is this part we're gonna we're gonna go down to the vin home park area I'll show you that. Uh, hey, let me give you some like like uh, B B roll footage. If you want some? If you all need some, take a little intermission from my little tour here. So I found another place that's nice. This area here has a little walkway. It's kind of cool. Uh, see me doing it. You get to this magnificent thing. Put money in there. You burn things for good luck or whatever. They got their superstitions, you know. Uh, I don't really uh, do that. I mean, it's fake money, of course, but still, I mean. But that's a cool thing and this is the road that takes you there now um, you can walk on the grass as well to get to the views this is a pretty nice view in the evening time i recommend you wear like shoes from here but uh yeah it's kind of low tide right now i think it's low tide let me check i think i think it is low tide uh, low tide so let me check my thing i think it's low tide and if it is that's why i see sandbars there wow. is it low tide let me see if it's low tide got a tide chart here you know what it is low tide because look it's low tide so tide's low uh low tide uh it's gonna be high tide low tide there we go so it is low tide right now that's why you see all this rubbish uh low tide is going down to about four feet of low tide from the shore 
We got a lot of uh, rubbish. Now, now if you look at the water here, it's pretty nasty. I don't know. Uh, I, I would never. I wouldn't want to swim across the Saigon River. It's pretty dirty. I mean, you have to understand it funnels out a lot of. Uh, it starts up in like Dong Nai area from the dam, and then kind of runs down. But then, you know, that Hongsa Trongsa little outlet thing that that you know the water runoff goes into here. So there's a lot of sewage in, in there, I think, and uh, you know, wastewater. So swimming in here wouldn't be a very advisable thing to do. I mean, I probably wouldn't eat fish from out here either. I mean, if you're gonna eat anything, eat something way out past the past the waterway in open water. That's what you want. So um, you know, but um, like see, you know, these boats are just you know just narrowly passing by. They got the buoys. The buoys are there, and letting the boats know that they can only go so far. I'm gonna give you a little tour of this place and we're gonna walk around I uh, was about to go eat had to like sit down rest for a little bit because I've been kind of tired walking and vlogging you know walking and vlogging is that that's it's it's a lot of work I, I thought it'd be easy but it's a lot of work don't get paid for it so it's like you know doing it almost like a, as a volunteer basis <laughs> maybe someday I'll get paid for it you know even if I did get paid for it wouldn't be very much I know I mean and until you hit until you hit the 100,000, 300,000, or maybe the 500,000, you know, you hit the 1 million mark, yeah, something like that, probably you're making some money. But, you know, I mean, there's some people who make some money in, in the, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, enough to survive, enough to get you by. But, but like, you know, sustainable income, I think you probably, you know, when you hit a million, you're, I would say you're pretty much set, even uh, at that point. Yeah, so, uh, you know, 100,000 is okay. Um, but you got to keep pushing out contents because otherwise um, YouTube's not going to show your videos. You know, they don't show your videos, you don't get no views. You get no views, you don't get paid. It's because it's all about getting views and it's all about getting paid. So, But when you first start out, it's an investment in your own time. You got to have your own time investment. Uh, they also playing a little basketball league. Uh, you could buy stuff here. Oh, I didn't know they had a vending machine. You could buy a vending machine. Touchscreen vending machine. Price are similar to what you would get at a, uh, you know, uh, I guess Vidmart or Kmart or what do you want to call it? When it's like a GS25, because I see the price here 10,000 for these drinks, and these drinks are 10,000 at those places as well. So uh, just a vending machine plugged in for the water. But uh, I don't know. Personally, I, I get it somewhere else. But if you really, really need it, you get it here. Then, uh, you know. Hey little kid, how's it going? You know, these, these kids are all like, these kids are like rich, I would say they're not, yeah, they're from rich parents, because all only the rich people live around here, rich in terms of the standard of living of Vietnam, of Saigon. I mean, uh, you know, they're rich, because their parents are living here, and they're playing basketball, they speak English, they have English teachers teaching them stuff. And so, yeah, I would consider that pretty rich compared to your average, uh, you know, everyday Saigonese or Vietnamese or people who live in the countryside or whatever. So, I mean, you look at these kids here. I mean, these are like spoiled kids. They're not spoiled, but, you know, their parents really take care of them. And they get they get the best of the best in this part. Because this is Saigon Pearl over here. And then Vin Pearl is down there. And, you know, you got to have money to live in these places. Uh, you know, most people live in like $2 million, $3 million dollar a month uh, units, you know, I mean, when I say two million, I'm talking about VND, you know, getting this gone. You know, where I'm staying, I, I got a nice little apartment for 12 million, which is a great deal. Uh, you know, it's very hard to find really good apartments. Mine, mine's really good, clean, 
um, have people come and clean the unit for me too every two days it's almost like a service apartment kind of but it's uh my own access coming in and out no pure privacy just have your own key on private entryway and uh yeah i'm on like a pretty high floor so i get a nice view as well so just lucked out on that but um yeah just sometimes you just get luck lucky you know you look around i mean i've been looking around some apartments either some 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 apartments are overpriced i think uh there's one lady uh in my other video i was telling you about the one place i was staying where the airplanes always coming she wanted 14 million i was like man i'm paying 12 million and my place is bigger than this well actually not bigger but it's just uh, you know for like a one bedroom she had a two bedroom but still i mean there's no noise there's nothing had a good view close to the city it's like in district three between district three and district like kind of like in between that gap uh at district three fung Yung and one so it was in that little triangle there which is really good because you know to go anywhere it only takes me like 20,000 24,000 on like non-peak and peak times probably like 30,000 to go from uh, my place to district one and get into the city i could get a motorcycle because i know you can fill a whole gas tank for 50 and that'll last you like a couple of days you know on a scooter but and, you know you pay you pay 30 40 somebody to drive you around it's kind of it does seem kind of expensive but guess what overall it does save a lot of time and i vlog and you know eventually the vlogs will get paid for what they get paid for so it's uh it'll come back one way or another and uh and it's also safe because you know when you ride with them you're insured so uh you know if you ride alone you might not be insured if you ride with them something happens you're insured because that's what it says on his apps and um so yeah so that's good uh for grab or for gojek so and, and then I'm, I'm still supporting the local economy for those people are, you know they need money so uh, i of course i can go rent a uh, scooter motorbike whatever you want to call it for like 150 200 for a whole day and ride it around you know technically not legal unless you have a license but i do have a license i have an international license um i did have a vietnamese license but that expires so I, I mean if i could i could renew if i wanted to um i also have a thai license as well so um i, I was gonna get a filipino license but i was like nah you know i'm not gonna be there that long so now they have that, that weird kind of rule where you stay more than six months to do some kind of exit program which is kind of weird but, so i decided like you know what vietnam is good enough for me and, and so is thailand so those two places i have license for uh, even though they expire you can always renew the license it's not a big deal to renew it and so uh yeah and anyway, what, what i was gonna talk about oh yeah i was gonna talk about like like you know like life in general when you're out here just enjoy it while you can you know and um if you have money great if you don't have money just enjoy what you have and then go home work save up and then come back uh, then that's the only way I, that's not that i can tell you a lot of people come out here with no money i met this russian dude um about some <laughs> okay you know what i should say russian okay let's uh okay let's uh, let's pretend you didn't hear that okay i met this like eastern european dude right and um he's been here for like a year oh my god i was like and he, uh, I met him just randomly doing what I'm doing. I'm, I won't say where, but uh, if, you, if you guys, you know, follow my vlog, you probably, probably can get a guess where I might have run into him. And then I said, hey, uh, what's up, dude? You're, you're the only white guy I've seen in a long time. I say, where are you from? He said, oh, yeah, he said, then I can tell he's not white once he start talking. And I say, hey, I'm a white guy too, you know? I was like, hey, I say, where you think I'm from? And he said, I don't know. I was like, what do you think my accent's from? And he said, probably America. I was like, oh, well, I don't know. I'm from Coruscant. You know out on the outer rim you know what that is he said nope it's okay then that's where i'm from anyway so then i said what what you doing here dude and he's kind of young he's like in his 20s he's yeah and the funny thing is he's been here <laughs> past his like um you know his time so i don't know what he's gonna do to go back because he, he had like i think a 30-day visa but he just just stayed for like a year <laughs> i'm like dude man you're in so much trouble man <laughs> we say he didn't care because uh I told him, to, so you, if you go to your embassy, maybe they help you out. He says, yeah, the embassy might help me out, but they might not also. And so then I just like, okay, well, I'm sorry, dude. I mean, like, tough luck on you. I said, how do you survive? He says, he's been working under the table, you know, you know and like uh, doing like odd jobs here and there and getting paid for it. I said, okay, well, that's cool. I said, so uh, what happened? Why are you here? He says, oh, that job, that company uh, moved to another city. And I said, why don't you go with him? He said, well, I can't go to that city. 
uh, because uh, that city has, uh, you know, um, just far away. I don't have any money to get that far. And they wanted the company to pay for you. They like it. They said, well, they, they all, they're only using me for my, uh, you know, for my, for my, uh, like, I guess it's English skill or something. I don't know. But they said they, they can find other people who have English skill um, or, or speak English. His English is not even that good, actually. He's like, you know, it's like broken English, but it's, it's good enough to understand. Anyway, so yeah, that guy was there. I think to myself, you know, the, well, the story's not really about him. The story's about just like, I'm trying to give you like a brief example, like don't be like that kind of person, you know, overstay your visa, working under the table, working not legally, not doing the things that you should be doing. You know, you're, you're a guest in this country, come here, enjoy it, then leave, go back to where you're from, you know, make the money, come back again, and uh, you know, spend the money here and uh, help the economy. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying about it, that. And so when I saw that guy, I kind of felt sorry for him, but I didn't really feel, feel sorry for him either because he, he chose that life. I mean, he knew what he was cho choosing to do. And so uh, when he chose that life, that's the life he chose. And so I think he's, he'll probably get blacklisted or get, or get in trouble or get, you know, deported when he leaves and stuff because it's his visa. <laughs> you stay over a year, that's a long time. And uh, he's technically homeless, you know? So uh, that's what I saw, I saw, I saw, that's all I'm gonna say about that. He's second homeless, and uh, we start with the guy, and that's it. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so that's my uh, little story about um, living your life here in Vietnam. Um, you know, enjoy it while you can, and when you can't, go back, work, save. Yeah, and if you watch my other videos, living abroad, uh, how to live abroad, and how to, how to save money, and like two, three easy steps to how to do it. Watch that video. I have a bunch of other videos too um, that will help you out on some, you know, advice here and there, dating advice and uh, you know, shopping advice, how to, you know, get around town and and do things. And just like I'm like this one, just just life in general. So um, that's all I gotta say about that. And uh, I'll end it with Come and Vita Sim. Thank you for watching, and until the next video, thanks. <laughs>